Liam, can you, uh, for a smaller crowd tonight, so can you come forward? Make yourselves cozy, bring some stools. Lots of stools. Okay, so I have to warn you. I have to warn you about two things. One is uh, the event tonight is not as advertised. So I was originally going to do a battle of the apps tonight, but because it's summer and I have another theory about Hong Kong. Hong Kong is very, uh, when it comes to technology, it's very fad driven. I did the Battle of the Apps two years ago and it was sold out in one week. I tried to do a Battle of the Apps in March and five app developers submitted. So if you're making an app in Hong Kong, just be aware the market is less crowded, which is probably an advantage. So tonight, instead of doing a contest, where something like Carson, where are you? Carson. Over there who's going to join. We're going to postpone the Battle of the Apps, but don't be worried because some of you who I've spoken to are in this audience are already making apps. And Patrick, who we're going to talk to in a moment, is also highly experienced in this space. So he can share a lot with you. But before we start, put your hand up if you're an app developer or entrepreneur or want to be. Who's a developer? Who's making money from apps? Patrick. Good guy. That's why I'm interviewing him. Who's a wannabe? Want to be? Wannabe? App? Wannabe? Not you? Kind of. Oh, yeah, chimbo. So, um, tonight we're going to talk to Patrick. So, a little, if you've got your own microphone, a little warm round of applause to Patrick. I'll introduce him in a moment. Uh, so before we start, let me just explain a lot of, I see a lot of new faces in this room. Uh, normally when I do a Web Wednesday, it's about two or three times this amount of people. So it's telling me that there's a lack of interest in apps in Hong Kong, which is fine. Uh, but let me, let me tell you a little bit more about Web Wednesday. I've been doing this now for eight years. Uh, I've interviewed famous startups. I've interviewed people from Facebook, LinkedIn, WeChat, WaveWorld and lots of Hong Kong entrepreneurs, because I think in Hong Kong we are not very good at promoting technology entrepreneurs. We're getting better, but we're still lacking. We have to beat Singapore. I have a mission to beat Singapore, correct? And possibly London. So anyway, before we start, let me tell you about Patrick. Patrick has been, I've had four Battle of the Apps so far, and Patrick has come to every single one, right? No? He's submitted, he's been the only guy, five, oh yeah, he was the only guy who stood up proudly and said, I have a Blackberry app. Right? So, you know, he's kind of, he's like a gay guy who's just come out of the closet, right? So, how many of you have a Blackberry? I have two of you. How many of you have them because you bought them yourselves? How many have them because your corporation, your IT department said, you must have a Blackberry? Exactly. How many of you have bought an app on your Blackberry? Because <laughs> right, the IT department is in the line. Right? <laughs> so let me tell you about Patrick. Patrick has been, well, we can we can interview him, it's probably more interesting. Patrick is one of these serial entrepreneurs in Hong Kong that exists. Uh, how long have you been here? In Hong Kong. But you didn't start your business in Hong Kong, right? You started in, what was it? Wuzhou, Changzhou, Shenzhen, or Changsha? Yunnan. Yunnan. You went from, from Germany yes. to Kunming. Kunming. You said, I've had enough of Germany, I'm going to Kunming. <laughs> so, are you happy that the Germans won the World Cup? Awesome. Yeah? That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> so tell us, tell us about how you got into the app business. So, so after excuse me, girls. Shh. Can't hear what he's saying. Thank you. All right. So after university in Germany, 
I joined a friend in China um, who wanted to do something with software for mobile devices. So that was what it was called like, in 2004. You mean before the web app did? Yes, so before there was an iPhone. Well, that was called yeah. Java, wasn't it called Java? Yes, it was one of the oh, right. So, and basically I moved to, moved to Kunming. You thought, I want to make software, I'll go to Kunming. Most people think, I want to go to Mellow Out, I'll go to Kunming. I'll go and take drugs, I'll go to Kunming. Many people do. Yes. <laughs> it's a nice city. <laughs> Very relaxed. Um, no, my, my friend was in China at the time. He was based in Beijing and he was saying, okay, we want to start this, we want to do some sort of GPS tracking, mapping applications for... Um, yeah, this, for when is this? 2000? That was 2004. Okay. So, and then um, I said, okay, I join you. So, January 2005, through Hong Kong, uh, I went to uh, Kunming. And Did you find developers in Kunming? Is Kunming famous for developers? Not at all. Minority developers. Shaoshu means so. Minority, not even. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, we, we, we were, in, in the end, we were three guys starting off as, um, you know, a small shop developing our own products. Uh, we made a lot of mistakes, it took us like half a year to create the first product. It was way too long. Um, and who were you selling to? Um, we, we were selling from the beginning to end customers. To end users. Okay. So we created the first application, it was called Spot. It was a GPS map application. Um, and it was able to run on Serbian phones. Trio? Is that the Trio? Trio. No, no, all okay. the stuff. Uh, it's also running on the Trio on Palm okay. devices. Um, it was running on Windows mobile phones, or tablets, like the PAs. Yeah. Um, and then we figured, oh, I can also run the BlackBerry. So we converted it, we, we ran it on BlackBerry, we put it out as a beta version um, to many different forums where people were hanging out and asked them, what do you think about this app and stuff like that. Um, and the, the, the interesting thing was that the BlackBerry community, like the BlackBerry users, they were the most active ones, like responding in 2005. Right? Um, but in 2005, BlackBerry was the it thing, right? Everybody had a... Yeah, yes, but all, but all professional people, right? Yeah. There's no one who had this, like, for... for what's Taking that? Photos. Stuff, right? Those selfies. Well, <laughs> I mean, the, the thing was that these BlackBerry users used to be people that had a lot of money. Because used to be. Do you have a lot of money? <laughs> yeah. He works for PR agency. And then, um, I'm surprised he's here. Should you be looking after your clients? <laughs> so, and they and they wanted to get more done with their clients, right? So therefore, they were looking for ways and how to enhance it. And there were back then there were a couple of so-called app stores that exist. Now they call app stores, but then they call something else. Um, usually, white labeled and co-branded by carriers. Um, our main target market was the US, but, um, US and Canada. Um, and so you were, you were three Germans <laughs> in Kunming making apps to sell in Canada. Maybe the US, but yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, so we were these foreign guys that had all the computers in their own, and the police came by to check on us, and were asking good questions. Um, but yeah, basically it evolved from them. Because we figured the backward community was very active, so then we started building more native applications for that platform and um, ended up mainly focusing on that. And then. But why? I mean, Blackberry, right? You didn't choose Windows. Why not Windows or Symbian? Symbian was not good because the user experience was really bad. Yeah. Very bad. Um, and it was extremely hard to develop for Symbian. No one, even back then, no one wanted to do anything to serve so close. For Windows Phone and for Palm, the problem was that you couldn't run it out of the box. You couldn't run the app out of the box. You had to install this third party thing on your phone first in order to run the app. Okay. So a very bad user. So it was very it was very hard, it was a big hurdle for people to actually use the app. And on the Blackberry it worked just out of the box. So were you making money by selling on Blackberry? 
Oh yes, we sold the application for 49 US dollars. And people were buying a GPS map for 49 US dollars. Yes. Wow. It was, it was, it was good. Would anybody in this room pay 49 dollars for a map? No? Going once, going twice. Going here 50? That's a good one. <laughs> well, yes, in 2005. In 2005, yeah, exactly. So, okay, so you're in the BlackBerry world in Kunming. How do you, you became, your company became one of the dominant players in BlackBerry apps, right? Yes. How does that happen? Well, after three years in China, we figured it's better for business in Hong Kong to say, you know, people um, And then, so basically you moved all operations here and then started diversifying into different kinds of products, more mainstream products, you know, um, utilities, productivity, task management, still looking into the... So for the office products. worker, right? The, the office worker you're talking about. Exactly, exactly. Because, because what we believe is um, that utility and productivity apps usually solve a certain problem that you have in the phone, under games, for example. So, and if you have, if your product solves a certain purpose, right, a certain problem, um, then you're more likely to use that in the long term and more likely to buy a different product with the same thing. So then, okay, so you're making productivity apps at BlackBerry. Yes. And then how does it, how do you market them? You're, you're going to the consumer. Does BlackBerry just give you lots of money or do you just give it to them? Do they buy it off you? How, or does the, there's a lady here from PCCW, she's so then, hey, I'll put your hand up, let me show you. She's doing mobile payment. If anybody's interested in mobile payment, what, sorry, what is your name? Rachel, talk to Rachel, NFC mobile payment, and we just lost two people. Again, shopping. No, we, we have an app for that. <laughs> so we do. So so all right. So so you 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 said that it was very, the, the shop the store idea was messed right. It was white label, go to yeah, area. Yeah, it was then, then, and then as soon as the iPhone launched, and then um, the short while after the App Store launched, and all the vendors kind of. You know, came up with you know, everyone wants their own vendors, like your hands, like the world, iTunes, Apple, and then obviously Android came up with Android Market. So you, you, you went to, was, was, app, was uh, BlackBerry very proactive about promoting all apps, or did you, was it like Apple where they just don't care, all they do is editorial you know, selections? Yeah, no, back then it was really hard. Like everyone, basically all developers we knew from the BlackBerry side, everyone complained about it. I saw how to develop it, like there's no documentation and nothing. And it was like that. No, it's it was really hard. Um, but we kind of figured it out and then the publishing worked not through the handset manufacturers but through other stores. But um, later on it all changed when they started to bundle the applications that was onto the phone and it was completely game changing because Thanks. you have the phone, you switch on and you they have so right. So you got your apps bundled? Well, we we got some bundled. We also sold some of some of them directly. Some some more professional applications sold directly into corporations. Mm. Uh, like uh, we, we had a law firm in, in Canada that bought like a couple thousand licenses so to show new product. Um, and we had like some warehouse companies. It's a really odd things. And were people scared that you were developing software in China? If you sold to the Americans, were they like a legal firm in America? Were they like a bit terrified that it might have some you know strange bug in it that was going to track everything? Oh yes, I mean it helps if you have Hong Kong written on there. Not All right. But um, there are questions. So tell me about how you this this thing here. Toshi, that's Japanese. Yeah. Like so and Chinese too. So you. So let's just move out of the way. You've got 46,230 apps on BlackBerry. Yes. Does that mean you were like, the number one app developer for BlackBerry? Yeah. Yes. Well, that's cool. Do they pay you money for that? Why don't they buy you? Why aren't you owned by BlackBerry? I'm not. You're not. <laughs> so how do, you, how do you go from making you know, a GPS map to having 46,230 city apps on BlackBerry. It sounds like you're, you're doing child labor or, or I don't know. How, how do you get so many people? It's uh, actually for most people. <laughs> yeah, there's some students here that are being accused. How old are you? 
Uh, 17? 19. Oh, 18. Oh, no, no, I'm the 18. No, when did you start programming? Uh, six. <laughs> like 13? So you were working for yourself, so it wasn't child labor, right? Child labor, yes. Child labor. <laughs> <laughs> it's called entrepreneurship. So, so yeah, how do you get, I don't understand how you can make so many apps and get them out so quickly. So what we, what we did back like, then was, um, well, actually, like, it was that old, like, three years ago, we started looking into um, lab applications. And no, that's where you started, like, no, GPS no. and Yeah, yeah, but later on, we, we, we were looking into offline lab applications. Okay. Meaning that you have an app on your phone that has all the maps in there that you need for certain regions, so you don't need any internet connection. It's funny you say that, because TripAdvisor, and Google have only just started making their maps yeah. downloadable, right? Yeah. So you were ahead of the curve and stuff like that. We we had that like three four years ago or something like that. Um, so we created applications that were bundled. There was one app for like one US state or one app for like, Hong Kong or one for like, all of Germany that had all the street level maps bundled into the app. So you, you download the app once and then you can go traveling to Germany, you don't need any roaming data or anything and you can use um, the app for personal navigation. Um, that's how we started looking into like, automating things, automating the whole um, app development process from creating the app icon to um, gathering all the content that has to be in there, to actually bundling it in there, to, um, to building the individual application, and then to publish it in an automated fashion. And last year, or actually two years ago, um, so about half a year before, like the 10th of March, um, we figured, okay, we have this cool, like a 10 SDK and we we'll build stuff, and it was easy to, to automate it. Why don't we build something that is just a bit bigger? And we figured the city, individual city guides as a travel guide. Um, Makes sense because if you want to go to um, if you want to go to London and you need um, you need information about the city, right? You need the maps of that city, you need know, what kind of you know, sites are that you want to visit, um, you need a currency calculator, foreign currency exchange, um, and a lot of other things. So we 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 figure we can bundle this all into an app and make it offline available in the app and then publish a city guide for each individual and uh, each individual city. And you charge these, right? Or they they're pay, free. Yes. They're paid. Yes. They want to pay application. But you're not making the content. We so you don't have strict normally when people get into content, they get frustrated because they have to find content providers, right? Or they have stringers or whatever it is. Exactly. So did you did you hire lots of writers or did you just syndicate content from other people? How do you have, get content? We have three sources of content. One is public content. Um, the like way public, way content. public content. content. <laughs> yeah. The other one... Germans uh, count in a different way from English people. We go like this. We don't start, like this. We don't, we don't start with our middle finger. No, actually, yeah. Is that from the World Cup? No. I no, no. meant that one. Seven. Seven. Okay. No, if I come to Germany, okay. we get public content. Okay. Right? Um, we got... Uh, we license content from third parties, and we have some content of our own around them. Um, so it's a mix of things. Obviously, the public content that we use uh, uh, has to be a certain license so that we can use it like a commercial fashion. Um, but basically, we take the content and bundle it into. And do you do any of the kind of fancy crowdsourcing stuff? Do you go and you know, pull images of Instagram, or do you? Oh yes. Do you? So you're a lot of that content that others have provided, you know, the whole crowdsourcing content. Yeah. Are you accessing that and bumping it into? Yeah. The yes. So for example, we have city picks um, section in each city guide. We can browse through and you just get like an idea of what the city looks like. Um, for that, we use um, Flickr. Um, Flickr has the possibility to access that content, filter it by license. Only so you're using the whole Creative Commons thing? Exactly, yeah. And then obviously you have to pay a commission to, yeah. to, to each creator, which is like inside the app as well. Um, and so you can see like, where each picture comes So how do you automate the whole process? Because I know there's a lot of discussion now. If you're, if you're a developer, 
we have it, you go, hmm, should I develop for iOS? Should I do Android? Forget BlackBerry. Shall I do Windows? Uh, no, forget Windows. Forget Windows. <laughs> forget Windows. So, anyway, you have a choice, right? Yeah. Shall I do Xiaomi? Or uh, they've got some developer. Or Alibaba, where it's got their own. So, uh, is it good? I see there's some developments where now you can basically develop once and you can go to all the platforms, right? Is it, who is it that's doing this? IBM or Oracle? Or? It, it's a, um, if, if, you, if you mean like in particular cross-platform. Yeah, um, because if you're a developer like Carson when he was 13, you know, he's been there, well, right, okay. Shall I do Android? Shall I do that? When he was 13, Android wasn't around, right? So the idea is how do you decide which platform to go to? Is it because, in your case, BlackBerry can sell pay? You know, theoretically, the, the media I've seen, if it's Apple, the conversion rates are higher and people pay more. Android, everybody wants everything free. So, from, a, from, a, from an automation point of view, yeah. um, you can't go Apple because it's extremely hard to hold the plus they have very strict rules. Um, I wouldn't, we wouldn't be allowed to publish 46,000 applications on that. So Why not? Because they're terms and conditions, stuff like that. Okay, so you're not allowed to plagiarize other people's content? No, it's not about that. It's about the similarity of the applications. Okay. So you can't have like too many apps that are similar. That's bullshit. Um, well, that goes to Apple. You, you do a search, so no, like 15,000 apps are the same thing. If it's from different developers, it's fine. Uh, but if it's your own ones. Oh, you can't compete against yourself. Okay. So, um, but then if you want to go cross platform, you know, like sense. There are tools out there like PhoneGap. Yeah. 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 Um, that, that allows you to basically write an app once and then run it on multiple platforms. Yeah, there's a company in Hong Kong called Mother App who started. You remember those guys? Yes, I They started like that and then uh, now all they do is develop apps and got, they didn't work. Right? Yeah. The problem with these cross platform things is, and anyone who considers them, is from my point of view, they just don't work. They, they are good for certain very simple things you can do, but the problem is that they usually come down to the most uh, common denominator, and that kind of leaves out the platform specific parts that each platform has. You mean the features, the technical each, features, yeah, or the, technical, yeah, the so UI, or what part of it? Yeah, technical features as well as um, you're limited in, in, in certain UI parts. So I, I want to know some numbers. Can you share some numbers? You're not a publicly listed company and you don't have a PR department. No, I know. So, <laughs> so if you make 46,000 apps, how many of those are free and how many are paid? All 46,000. Is it a freemium model where it's like try it out, yeah, like it, convert? No. No? It's paid up front. No. That's very dramatic. How much do you charge? Too high. Two ways in the US, yeah. and people pay. Some people do. Obviously, well, you know, we, we cover a wide range of products, uh, of cities. So there are some cities that will be bought only once in a lifetime. Um, other ones will be bought more often, like, you know, the top 10 cities in like Paris, New York, Hong Kong. Um, um, but besides the city guys, we have a lot of other products. Um, some are free. So I don't know your product. Okay, so you've got a, you're on like a catalog, right? Yeah. You're at the stage where you have a catalog of products, right? Your productivity. Are you doing games? We do. We have some games, maybe a handful. Games are very hard, I think, because yeah. because games are very um, very engagement driven. So it has to be something extremely unique, something that, that sucks you in, and you just keep playing it every day. Like, uh, like Flappy Bird. Bird. Yeah, Flappy Bird. Bird. What's happened to him? No idea. He's been killed. I think he wants to relaunch the thing. Oh, really? So, but games, you have the problem that, that it's really hard to monetize. Um, unless you can really get a lot of movies. Um, so, we mainly focus on non game apps, but then everything in that, in that range. So, so photography, for example. Okay, photography is a hot one. Where's Ronnie? There we go. I don't introduce Bronny, he's a very good photographer. Hello, great to everybody. Bronny.com. <laughs> Where's your t-shirt? My t-shirt's in the laundry. In the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> You've got one t-shirt with Bronny.com. <laughs> Three Bronny.com. So, yeah, so, so the photo stuff, yeah. obviously. 
then uh, productivity. Productivity, yes. For uh, both social media, like social social applications, yeah. messaging. We have some smiling app, right? Everyone likes smiles. Um, we have some theme applications. So, if you can advise somebody who wants to go into the app world, what do you think is the most profitable area to go into if you're building an app from scratch? Most profitable apps, according to some uh, research studies, are supposed to be productive in applications. But it's not, it's, it, the volume You mean like to do lists like things? Or yeah, like, like, thing, like past who, who stole the milk or for whatever. Yeah. 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 But, but they are, um, they're also getting harder and harder to get into because they become really sophisticated to sync. So you yeah. nice all your, all your content with other platforms trying to take change and all that stuff. Um, so that's hard, um, but it's one of the most popular ones. So how do you go, were you sitting there and you go, hmm, black for me, hmm, they're going to die. So you do something, or go team. So how do you, do you suddenly decide, right, I'm going to do Android? Or you go, no, I'm going to do iOS. What we, what we did four years ago was, we were developing BlackBerry, which was a Java-based platform. And then we were saying, okay, we need to diversify. So, we started then working on it because Java base as well. It's different kind of core. And so is it, easy to, is it easy to transfer, to transfer your developers from? On, right? Yeah, you can transfer the developers, but you cannot transfer any, any, any source code or anything. Oh, really? It's not that so you have to write it from scratch. You know, okay. In order to make it like native and to have a unique app experience. Um, and then about a year after, we started developing clients. Um, Are you using iOS? Yes. Sacra blood. Well, you went from BlackBerry to Android to iOS. Yeah, but then we stopped iOS about a year ago. Why? Because it was not profitable. Really? Um, yes. You gave up iOS for Android. Is Android more profitable? For us it is. I mean, there, there, are, there are certain things, right? On, on iOS, you're, the, the kind of stuff that we do, especially when you want to integrate into the operating system very deeply, um, then I guess it's a bit harder or well, certain limitations there. Yeah. You can't do Android is quite open, you can do a lot of stuff. So how many apps do you have in Android and how many in iOS? Um, I think Android we have, uh, iOS we have 25 applications, Android we have 83. Okay. Um, but we want to launch 46,000 in Android. On Android. There must be some developers in this room. Who's looking for a job? Mm -hmm. Very nice job. They, these guys know they have this. <laughs> so, all right, so you convert those into Android. So is, if you're an app developer, do you think there is a business model in advertising? I remember you uh, asked me that very question a couple years ago. I said absolutely no. Absolutely no. What about now? And um, the people that are sitting in the room that just yeah, yeah. all that was um, But now, I say the market has evolved. Like there's a lot more advertisers now that spend money, big money, on advertising, all that advertising as well. It's coming more and more into the minds of, you know, especially marketing agencies and um, folks that are not, I, I don't know, they didn't really care much about the mobile field a couple of years ago. Um, same, same thing in the so you think there is money in advertising? Yes, we do. We do a lot of applications that utilize mobile advertising. Um, we we have we have one app, for example, that generates about fifty million ad requests a day. So you you have the possibility to you know show a lot of advertising and to engage people into the advertising part. What kind of app to them that gets fifty million ad requests? Um, that's actually a BlackBerry app. Oh, really? Yes, it is. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a monitoring app. It's a battery monitoring app. Okay. But it's not just a simple, plain, statistical app. Um, it also has some uh, funny voices that tell you something about the battery state. Right? So you have um, someone telling you, like you have, you have a voice talking when you're running low on battery. Or when you, when you start charging, these kind of things that give, that give it a bit more fun.